just happens to be that Audi came in with a car that was well proven and they, uh, they got a little bit of weight. But the, the truth, I suppose, of the matter is that I could sit beside Frank and hold his hand and it wouldn't slow him down any. So 30 kilograms is like, uh, you know, it's a waste of space. Some people say, what is 30 kilograms? But 30 kilogram is a lot because it is unbalancing the car. And then you have to start again with a new search for the balance of the car. And you have to search out all the things you can do to bring the car working as it should work with the weight you have developed it for. Audi can make hay with the publicity, but it rankles that the four rings appear to have been punished for running rings around everyone else. Success and Audi have been synonymous since the Mark first went into racing in the early 1930s. Audi originally were just one of the famous four rings. That symbol came from the merger in 1932 of Audi, Hoch, Vandera and Descarve to form the Auto Union. When the Union went into competitive racing in 1934, they enjoyed the sort of start that Frank Bieler would emulate in Britain over 60 years later. In that first year, Hans Stuck was preeminent. Two years later, they enjoyed their finest season, including a 1-2-3 finish at the Swiss Grand Prix. Bernd Rosemeyer joined Stuck as the dominating force of the time. And if his driving had spectators on the edge of their seats, it was nothing compared to what it did for the seat of his trousers. Other driver names like Tazio Nuvolari had become world famous by the time 1939 witnessed the final race of the Auto Union Silver Arrows. But the silver livery was to re-emerge in the 90s with the Four Rings, the other old partners long extinct, now representing Audi. And for all the additional obstacles being thrown in their way, Audi are determined to add a victorious chapter to that illustrious history from the 1996 British season. Success in the championship necessarily boosts domestic sales, but the drivers do their bit for that off the course as well as they attend open days and forums at Audi dealerships around the country. From school, I was always a, an athletic and a running at schoolboy level when I was 16. And then when really cars became part and bikes and things from then on in, that was really it. Cars from then on in. We're certainly getting reports back from dealers that people are coming in, they're noticing, they're watching the TV, they're reading the column inches on the, uh, on the sport, and they're coming in and, and really getting an interest, both in Audi and in particular in Quattro, which is a, a unique selling point for Audi. But overall, one has to say that uh, our sales performance being 36% up year on year has to do with many factors, but I'm sure the racing literally has a, has a part to play in all of that. And from Knock Hill to Brands Hatch, Thruxton to Snetterton, touring car racing is now snapping at the heels of Formula One in terms of spectator appeal. identify with it. <clears throat> it gives them pride of ownership about their cars because they see their Vauxhall or their Audi or BMW or whatever racing against other cars and, and winning or doing well and it gives them a sense of pride. And apart from that, the racing is spectacular. It's, it's good close sport action and uh, it's something that's probably sadly missing in a lot of other uh, major motorsport events. So it's good entertainment. It's also quite an experience if you're lucky enough to grab a ride with a world champion and get a taste of what it's like in the really fast lane. <laughs> that was absolutely terrific. I think the thing that gets you the most is the, is the late braking. Your normal sensation is to brake much, much earlier. But, uh, and the power and the cornering ability is absolutely, truly sensational. Uh, I think I can just about get out now. <laughs> And for racetracks and domestic marketing alike, there's a single theme.
the return of the renowned Four Ring. The uh, association between Audi and motorsport, very strong in customers' minds, um, the fire-spitting Audi Quattro's of the 80s, and going back, quite, quite a lot of people um, know of the auto union as well. So yeah, very much uh, an Audi tradition that we want to re revitalize. But the revitalization of Audi in the 1996 British Touring Car Championship has now become a weighty problem. As the only four-wheel drive car competing, the A4 already carries an extra 65 kilograms. Now, it's been penalized another 30. Unfortunately, because we won one of the heaviest, well, the heaviest car in the paddock, now, it's not a very pleasant push -in. weight penalty is bad news, bad weather for the four-wheel drive Audis tends to be good news. Indeed, such is the handling, wet weather is now known as Audi weather. And in round eight, the Audi drivers take full advantage with Bieler winning and Bincliffe finishing third. It uh, started to rain at the right moment, at the right moment, and it started to dry up at the right moment because I think Roberto was on uh, intermediate and it came closer and closer when it was uh, a bit damp. But uh, then the circuit was drier and drier again, so uh, I could manage to, to keep first position. Qualifying for the next two rounds at Alton Park again takes place in Audi weather, allowing Bieler to capture pole position both times. But in both races, he's beaten into second place. And the pit lane talk is whether that's because of the 30 kilograms of extra weight being added for the first time, or whether Audi are deliberately sandbagging to cover up their superiority even with that weight handicap. Do you ever go out and not give 100%? No, never. And uh, I promise you, especially now with the 30 kilos and uh, uh, with a stronger competition, you have to go 100% to, uh, to, um, to qualify, let's say, under the first 10 cars or something. But the abiding memory of the Cheshire races is the horrifying accident suffered by Kelvin Burt in his Volvo 850. He remains unconscious for 15 minutes. Thankfully, he recovers fully, a tribute to the stringent safety measures insisted on by the series organizers. It's probably the first uh, demonstration we've had of the new safety regulations that have been incorporated into these cars, and clearly they work. You know, that was a massive accident, and uh, had uh, Kelvin been in a car from a year or two ago, um, I think uh, the results would have been far more serious than they were. So it's, it's testimony to, to, the, to the new safety regulations that have been introduced and uh, I hope a lot of people sit up and take notice at, at it and, and have a good look at what they're doing to their cars both in other series and in the BTCC. Enhanced safety features are an integral part of the 1996 A4. We've got um, an impact absorbing panel in the door which has been proved to work very successfully in uh, test conditions. We've got uh, much stronger seats than we had last year with the wraparound um, pieces to stop the driver's head moving about too much. And um, basically the whole car has been strengthened uh, to a certain, deg certain degree more than last year to make sure that uh, the, it should survive, that the cell itself should survive those sort of impacts. But Bert's accident brings back bad memories for Bieler. In Germany in 95, Bieler, unsighted in traffic, crashed into the stricken Nissan of Quito Door. The British driver did not survive. It definitely took me months to, um, yeah, to, to live with the situation or to come along with the situation, you know, and, and still now, very often, especially because I'm uh, racing in England, of course, very often I, I think about uh, what happened last year. Yeah? And, um, but I think for me the main thing was that I uh, never had the impression it was really my fault. Yeah? I was uh, unlucky to be in this car which crashed into Kizodor's car, but uh, I always had the impression it, it was not really my fault because I couldn't do something different. And, um, but it's definitely a difficult situation and, and I'm, I'm very sorry for what happened last year, of course. It's a stark reminder of the ever-present dangers that motorsport can present.
mastermind behind Auda's return to the British Championship is Dr. Wolfgang Ulrich. It was his gamble to leave precious little time for the British team to be assembled. If I look back to 94, we did the same thing in Italy. We have been later then because the decision to do it in Italy came in December and the championship started at the end of April and in December the team didn't exist. And it worked well because we could win the first year in the championship immediately. So I was quite optimistic that with these three months more, we should manage it. And manage it they did, due significantly to the hands-on approach of the head of Audi Sport. Dr. Ulrich oversees 18 cars racing in seven different countries, but the weight penalty imposed on his two drivers in Britain remains his biggest worry. Last year, uh, Nissan and Ford tried four-wheel drive cars, but they never, never have been competitive. They have been always much slower than their front-wheel drive cars. So they stopped their development. Now we're alone. That means whenever any penalization of a four-wheel drive car will be, it will be that we will be penalized. And we will never be able to show that it's not only the four-wheel drive, it's what Audi has done out of the four-wheel drive. And like not being compared with like is an increasing concern because the other teams are beginning to get their acts together. So, after 12 rounds of the season, Bieler holds a 49-point lead in the championship with Bintcliffe lying fourth. It looks promising enough, but with the weight penalty, everyone's wondering if those positions can be defended over another 14 races. For Dr. Ulrich, the Buckingham boardroom must feel like a lonely place as he faces the possibility of his gamble going wrong. With the season in full swing, a driver may see more of his backup team than his family and friends. He does, he has his moment of peace now. Got his new gloves. Show me new gloves, John. Look at them. Are they pole sitting gloves or what? Driver and mechanic becomes a close relationship, even though most of the pit lane personnel would like to swap places. I'd say 95% of the mechanics are all frustrated racing. Um, because that's what the attraction is when you initially go. I mean, I've raced, I've raced a little bit. I did Metro Turbos for a season. I've done some Formula Ford. I used to work at the, the racing school at Silverstone. Um, you know, I'd, I'd love to do it again. I'd have to win some money. I don't think I've got the, I don't think I've got the drive to be able to, to leave this and then spend everything I've got and sell everything and go and go racing. The drivers may get all the public recognition but the really hard work goes on behind the scenes. That is, when the bosses are around, at least. A very brief cup of tea because management is standing right behind you. Bintcliff can be accident prone on any circuit, hence his appreciation of his number one mechanic. He's a good bloke actually, I think he's very good at his job. And the thing I like him most about him is the fact that, you know, He's always full of spirit and, you know, this sort of die-hard sort of attitude to get in and get stuck in. And I think at times we've had bad days when the car's been smashed up, whatever, and they've got stuck in. When I think some of the other lads have said, oh, you know, 